This is the brake drum off of my bus. I have a, a MCI 8 a bus, kind of like a Greyhound bus, that we converted into a motorhome years ago. And this brake drum has act, is actually out of round. I don't know if you can if you can see it. It got a little rust on it yesterday when I took it out. It was raining, so it got a little. You can see a little rust right here. But uh, when I took it off, there's the wear pattern is you know it's shiny here. See, and then it hits this spot where it's skipping, and then it comes back here. And then the same thing happens over on this side right here. This thing is a beast. I don't know how much it weighs, but it seems like it's like a hundred pounds or something. But uh, it's got, you can see right there, it says maximum diameter. Maximum diameter is 14.830. So we're going to move this over to the mill and get ready to uh, resurface it. All right, I've got it mounted on the mill, and you can see I got it bolted down in two places. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get a, a uh, meter in here and. Uh, register this off of uh, this part right here. This is where it registers on the bus, so I'm assuming that's where I should register it uh, in order to uh, turn it. You know, I'm not an expert at this, but <laughs> there is nobody in town that will uh, that can turn a drum this big. So I got to figure it out somehow, either that or buy a new drum. And I may wind up having to do that, but they're like $400. So, so I've got the gauge in here now and what I did was I measured from the quill out to the edge all the way around it uh, to kind of get it um, close to centered and so let me uh, zoom you in here let's turn it on and see where we are and we're actually pretty darn close See what we got okay that's worse that's about as good as it gets in that axis let's try this one oh that's really good right there so the way this gauge works is you um, you get it spinning and then you adjust your X your X and Y you know handles you move these handles back and forth until you move this one until it uh, gets this little bit of movement in the needle as you can and then you come back over here and you move this one until you get as little movement in the needle as you can and you might have to go back and forth. We kind of got lucky and it uh, just took a couple of adjustments. I interrupt this video uh, because I've got like over an hour's worth of uh, video trying to get this brake, uh, brake drum turned. And nobody wants to see that, especially me. So I, uh, but I do want you to know what didn't work and then I'll get to what did work. Um, and th that's the, the interest, real interesting part of this video. But I started out with my boring head and the longest boring bar that I have in there. It was a carbide. And I, it, as it's going around, I'm going at about 50 RPMs. It would give me a great finish for about that far and then it would get dull and I'd have to resharpen it. So I kind of had starts and stops and not the exact same diameter. And some of it had better finishes than others and it, it, it was not good. And okay, so here's what that looked like. Got the boring head in the mill. Got my longest uh, bit in there. I've got this already pushed over quite a bit. Hopefully though, I'm not gonna have to extend it much more. Uh, we're going to run, that's uh, at, a, I don't know, about 50 RPMs.
So that was going along and I got down toward the bottom and the finish was bad. I had bands of, you know, so, but anyway, I got to the bottom and I don't know if it's, I'm doing something wrong or it's just my boring bar or what, but, um, the boring head, but the way it screws in there, if it jams, it wants to unscrew. If you've got it, you know, sticking out the side like that. So I, um, when it got down to the bottom, it did that and it started unscrewing and it cocked it to one side and it broke the, the carbide off the end of my boring bar. And it was the only one I had that was long enough um, to do that 14 inch diameter uh, drum. So I made one, so I had to make me one that I could put some high speed steel in uh, in order to try to get this job finished. So I made a video of making that boring bar if you wanna see that. But I, uh, so I, I made that boring bar, put it in the boring head, got it started, and it was giving me a beautiful finish. And so here's what that looks like. I do like the way this high speed steel's cutting it though. It uh, seems to be doing a lot smoother job. There's a shot of the cutter. Um, up against the side. I thought you might be interested in kind of how it fits the diameter. All right, back to cutting. It was doing a good job and it was giving me a good finish. Well, when it got down um, about halfway where the glaze, uh, I hadn't broken the glaze off of the drum with the carbide, it would it'd go around and then it would uh, it would jump up on top of that glaze and um, start, uh, actually it was pushing the drum around. So, um, and I tried sharpening it different ways and putting different profiles on it and all of that. And I think what was happening, I haven't really done the math to make sure, but um, you know, that drum's 14 inches in diameter and I was spinning at about 50 RPM. So I had to be going way too fast for that high speed steel. So I was probably just losing my, my uh, edge really quickly. So uh, the high speed steel wasn't working so I thought okay I gotta go back to the carbide. Now luckily when that boring bar when the carbide broke off it just came off in one big chunk so I thought well if the Japanese folks that made this thing can braise it back on there I ought to be able to do the same thing. So um, I, I made a video of brazing the carbide back on there and it actually worked great. Um, it just brazed right on and I mean that it looks in the video like it gets to like an orange heat or something. I don't think it, I don't think it really actually got that hot. It was like a, a bright red um, color of the, the carbide got. So anyway, I braised it back on there. I sharpened it and then I did what I should have done in the beginning. I went to the internet and I thought, okay, there's got to be something I'm doing wrong. So I looked it up and some of the guys were saying that a brake drum is basically just a big bell. And so when you're cutting it, it rings. And you can hear it in the video, it's ringing. So, and they said that the professionals that turn drums, they have a big rubber uh, band, heavy duty band that they put around it. I didn't have any of that, so I had a bunch of bungee cords and I put that on there and you'll see in the video, those bungee cords. And then, so I sharpened up my carbide and did the original setup and started and it worked great. I mean I got um, halfway down and of course that's as far as my quill will go with the bridge port so I had to stop and then reset you know bring my quill up and then raise the drum up so I could get that last for it's about eight about eight inches uh, deep or something that whole side but anyway I got one sharpening on that carbide went all the way from the top all the way to the bottom um, there's a tiny little line that you can see, you can't feel it with your fingernail. And when I got through, I ran a last word indicator from top to bottom, and I had two thousandths of run out from the top to the bottom. So I was really pleased with that. Finally got the project done and um, got it on the bus, and it's working great. So uh, let me show you the video now of that. Uh, that last part where it actually works. Halfway down, and now 
I have reset. I had to, uh, my throw isn't far enough to go all the way down. So I've reset it and it's on its way down for the second pass. I'm getting a really good finish. And I think this will be uh, the final pass. Let me get you in there. It's taking off that. You can say I had. There it goes. That stuff down below, I just really didn't have a very good finish. This is doing much better. If you can, let me move it up. You can see up above it. That's the finish we're getting now. Down here we have a lot of chatter. So hopefully this will be a final pass. I'm running about, uh, let's see. I'll put my tachometer on here. Well, you can't see it. Well, maybe if I do it this way. I'm running right at 64 RPM. I really should be running probably around uh, 30 or 40. But anyway, that's as low as my uh, bridge port will go. So that's what I'm doing. And it's, uh, it seems to be working a whole lot better. Okay, so after much trial and tribulation, I finally got it done. Um, I think the main uh, difference was putting these bungee cords on here. Got rid of the ringing, like it was ringing like a bell. And that, I think, was chipping the tip off of my uh, carbide. Because before, I couldn't get that far uh, without having to stop and regrind my tool. And this one went all the way to the bottom. You can see a tiny little line uh, right there, but that was just because um, my quill will only go that deep. So I did that much of it, and then I had to stop and go down. And you can't even, you can't even feel that with your finger now. So uh, it's just really visual more than anything. So that's it. If you need to do a big drum, that should work for you. Uh, if I ever need to do another one, I'll look at it and try to remember how I did it. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I certainly learned a lot.